Hello, my name's Kim Zaha. I'm a physiotherapist and Pilates instructor. I'm going to take you through today some knee rehabilitation exercises. Suitable for those people who have got knee pain um, and nothing too drastically wrong with it. I can't diagnose any knee problems here on YouTube. So if you can look through down through my description box, you'll see a list um, that I'd like you to have a look through. And if you can say yes to all of those questions, then this video hopefully is going to be um, helpful to you and not cause you any problems. Um, I'm going to use this equipment here, the foam roller, the um, Pilates ring and the ball. It doesn't mean that you have to have these things at home. Again, if you look through your description box, you'll be able to see a few things, a few household things that you can use um, instead of this equipment. If you have them, then wonderful. Your gym probably has them as well. Okay, so we're going to start off on the floor doing some release work. It's going to be very important to release some things around the knee um, in order to then do the rest of the exercises um, effectively and efficiently. So we're going to release the IT band first. Usually with any knee problems, the kneecap is usually involved to a certain extent. So we have to release through the IT band, um, which tends to come from a bit of gripping up through the hip to try and stabilize through the leg. Um, and if we can release off these structures and tighten up the structures through the inside of the leg, then excellent. So foam rolling is one thing that causes a lot of pain. Um, and so I'd like to do it relatively pain-free. Um, as much as we can. So you need to sit on it on the hip here, come down on this elbow, um, and then you also need to use the top leg a little bit. So plant that foot down nicely. Um, and then we're just going to shimmy up a little bit over to the side and just find a few spots through that leg that you can just roll up and down on. Um, find the spots and stay on it, roll up and down, but do use this elbow and use this foot to push down through to see if you can just take a little bit of weight off. It doesn't have to be a full weight down on it. A lot of people that do um, foam rolling without any advice tend to lie on it and stick the other leg up here and roll up and down and then never do it again because the bruise has held so significantly. So you should really want to spend um, about, I would say, just two or three minutes on each leg, just shimmying up and down a little bit, just finding some of the spots that are particularly tight. You can roll slightly forward and get the interface between the IT band and the, and the quads, the lateral quads on that side. And you can roll a little bit back so you can take this leg back and you can again get that interface between the IT band and the, um, and the hamstrings. Um, so there's a lot of fascia around there that we want to get into. Mine are feeling pretty sore today. If you do any significant exercise, you probably feel quite sore through them. Um, so just roll up and down. That's probably about two to three minutes on that side. If you want to pause the video and do a little bit more, um, then do so. My microphone's on this side, so I'm going to demonstrate for the sake of it, but I'll probably not move too far down. So you'll notice I start quite high up anyway through here. You can actually get into your TFL, you call it, the tensor fasciolata that tends to work instead of the glutes. Um, and if you roll up and down in that, it tends to be um, what I saw the other day. Someone said the condom pocket, apparently. Um, so it's just like where that top pocket of the jeans are on the front there. So if you try to try to roll into that, that's really useful. Um, and then you can obviously come down and further down towards the knee on this side, rolling to the front rolling towards the back a little bit. If you do roll towards the back, you can get into your glute med, um, which is um, at the top, at the back there. Um, again, if you think about your back pocket, above your back pocket, between that and your belt, um, that's where your glute med is, which you're gonna move on to a bit later with some strengthening work. Um, but that also gets a little bit knotted up when, when the hip and the IT band and the leg isn't functioning properly. So make sure you get into all of those trigger points, we call them going down through that leg, taking the weight off, like I say, with this arm, with this foot um, and rolling up and down. Brilliant. So again, you can pause the video to, to work on that a little bit more yourself and make sure you go down to the bottom through that leg. Like I say, I haven't because my microphone's sitting there. Um, okay, so moving on, we can um, release through the hamstrings as well. The hamstrings come down and they insert um, round towards the, um, the front of the knee there. So it tends to affect how the knee functions um, and tight hamstrings are a really big cause of, um, of knee problems. So if you launch yourself up onto the roller here or, or the alternative, alternatives which I've talked about in my description box um, hopefully you can get hold of one of these very useful tool um, alternatives tend to be big two litre bottles of coke um, which you can get away with it's not quite so good rolling backwards and forwards and you can turn the toes out so again roll through that outer hamstring 
Um, you can roll right down around the knees into the back of the knee there, massaging through where those tendons insert around the back of the knee and into your popliteus as well which is a little muscle that sits at the back of the knee and, um, and it, it works on this sort of unlocking mechanism. Um, so when you've locked your knees completely out, um, it's another big cause of knee pain when that muscle goes into spasm. So you can roll into that popliteus a little bit, you can wander down and you can roll a little bit towards the top, although it's a little bit too fleshy around the top of the hamstring there to really get into with the roller, but you can nicely, nicely get into the belly of the hamstring, down to the tendons around the back of the knee and a little bit lower into the popliteus right at the back of the knee there. Um, just be a little bit careful with that one because there are some big blood vessels and nerves that run through there so don't spend too much time and certainly keep moving. If you would like to you can get into the calves quite nicely here. Um, the calves again have a bit of an influence on on how the knee functions so you can roll again towards the inside of the calf towards the outside of the calf pretty tender on me today so I'm not going to hover around there too much but if you feel like that's that's a problem for you then working into it with the roller is is really quite useful okay so there's your main section of foam rolling of course you can roll through the quads you can you can do a lot of nice things there but these are the those are the most important ones um, so if you just put your roller aside, um, I'm going to use um, the ring to now stretch out through the hamstrings. Um, you don't have to use a ring at all, you can, um, you can use a towel, so just sling the towel around the foot and then pull down. I've got the ring so I might as well use it, so come down onto your head there. Other knee is bent um, and what we want to do is push straight and then um, just bend off a little bit there, so push straight and bend and we're going to count to 30 of these. You're going to allow the toes to be pulled down towards you and you're going to stretch your heel up towards um, the sky in this case, how nice, um, but maybe the ceiling in your case. Pull the shoulders down away from the ears and tighten up through the thigh as you stretch out there. You might not be here, you might be a little bit further down, so feel free to take the head and the shoulders off if you need to. They don't have to be down, but hopefully if you're using a towel you can... Um, uh, just make it longer. Okay, so the ideal hamstring length would be 90 degrees here. A lot of you will be stuck at this level, so you'll be going up and down at that level there. Um, and the hamstrings can really affect how the knee functions. Good, I'm going to do the other side. Stopped counting completely there because of talking so much. <laughs> so keep going. Just try and keep the hips square, keep tightening through the knee, keep allowing the toes to be pulled down. It's a little bit of a nerve stretch here as well. So if you feel a slight uncomfortable feeling all the way down through the back of the leg, that's probably that big sciatic nerve, which of course can really feed into what happens with the knee. So these more um, mobile up and down type stretches are more to do with the sciatic nerve. Okay, we're gonna swap legs again and we're gonna do a hold this time. So we're going to pull, pull a little bit more with the arms and stretch and hold for 30. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, another ten. Pull a little bit more. Brilliant. That leg down, pick up the other one. We're going to push and hold for 30 again on this side. I'm not going to repeat this one more time for the sake of just flow of the video, but um, again, if you can pause it and do one more set of these stretches, that would be wonderful going forwards. If you look in the description box, I'll, I've got a, a description of each of the exercises as well, uh, which might help you if you can copy and paste and print it off, take it to the gym with you. You don't have to watch me doing this every single time, but if it's helpful for me to be doing it along with you, then wonderful to do it at home. Great stuff. And then here we go. Most importantly, if you don't do any of these other exercises, um, do this one. So, um, so coming um, onto your front, we need to stretch off the quads. Now the quads are um, a big muscle that um, obviously come from the front of the hips, some of them a little bit lower, um, the other three, and they cross over the knee. Um, and this, what we call the extension mechanism, straightens the knee. 
Um, and in between it, you've got your kneecap that sits there right in the middle of this big, big tendon that comes over. And the kneecap exists because, um, because the, it, the tendon would fray otherwise if, if we didn't have a nice bone in there. Um, so we, uh, this easily gets grippy and tight and it really affects how that, that kneecap functions. So the amount of people that I see with tight quads and I think to myself, if I could just get them stretching their quads once or twice a day every day and get the heel to the bum, most important. Importantly, um, then that would be wonderful. So I always stretch the quads in lying. So onto your front, um, tuck your bottom under, tummy in, squeeze your bum a little bit, and then pull the heel towards your bum. Now some of you are going to be all the way over here. Sometimes some of you are going to be much further away. Um, so use your towel away, um, towel or your your ring here um, if you're much further away, so you don't have to twist and reach down so much. Some of you will have back problems, which will irritate by twisting and reaching down. But wrapping a towel around can be really useful you can even use the towel here and pull it up over your head um, but for those of you who are lucky enough to not be quite so tight then um, in this position should be just fine so square off the hips keep the knees relatively together and again it's a 30 second hold some of you might feel this pulling in and around the knee. Now you've got to assess um, how significant that pulling is. Um, if you release and it feels fine again, then okay. But I don't want you to push too much into pain here. Good. That'll be about 30 seconds again. Other side, you can time these a little bit better yourselves. So holding there, bottom under, tummy in a little bit. Good. And if you've particularly got these kneecap problems, again, you might feel this pulling quite significantly around the knee. However, it is going to be the right thing for you to do. So releasing off these quads will give a lot more space for that kneecap and a lot less pressure against the knee itself. Good. There's plenty to talk about on this one, so I'm going to do another set with you. <laughs> <laughs> so making sure that the hips are square, bottoms tucked under, knees are together. Um, you can do a little push against it and then a pull again. So just vary it slightly. If you can get hold of the ankle, you can pull the toes up, which is just a slightly different stretch. And you can point and flex through the toes at the same time. Just other little ideas. You don't have to do any of these things. Good. Other side. You're best off resting the head down here. I don't want any neck injuries as a result of trying to get your knees rehabilitated. Good. Brilliant. Okay, so another really important muscle group that I think a lot of people forget about are your adductors through the inside here. So bring your legs out into a V. A lot of you are going to be a little bit surprised probably how, how tight this is. If you hand, have your hands behind and lean forwards into it, um, then you'll feel, feel that quite significant stretching, I think, through those adductors. Um, if you have your foam roller, really lovely to, um, to have it out in front of you rolling out make sure you keep your chest up and open rolling out so the adductors again they attach into the knee a lot of you will have uh, medial knee pain knee pain on the inside of the knee so there's a lot of structures that attach on the inside and nerves that pass through that would probably benefit quite significantly from stretching off your adductors so like I say, you can roll this forwards if you haven't quite got enough range to do that put your hands behind and just let your hands push push forwards into it slightly. You can come from side to side a little bit more. Again, pause the video and um, have a little investigation of this one yourself. See, see what you can work on there. Okay, so moving swiftly on to um, some more strengthening exercises, but still down on the mat. Um, so We've, um, we've released your, um, your IT band, what we call the lateral stretches, the stretches on the outside of the knee. Now we want to strengthen the medial stretches. So this muscle here is your VMO. Um, I think about it as a footballer's muscle because it does that last little bit of extension. And plus in footballers, you get this um, nice big bulge here, which uh, is your VMO, your vastus medialis oblique. Um, so we want to do one leg at a time. Um, if you do have one leg that's a problem, 
short of time, just do that leg, not short of time, do both legs, uh, but one at a time. So you're pushing down into the roller, you're pushing into it to lever the ankle up. So you're not lifting from here. Um, that can just irritate things. It'll kick in all of these muscles. So you're literally levering the toes up by pushing down into the roller as hard as you can. Try and deform the roller by pushing down. And you should see this muscle pop up here. So push and hold for 10. Nine, ten, and come back down again, and again, push down, lift, hold for ten, pulling the toes up at the same time. Nine, ten, good, last one, push down and hold. You should feel some stuff going on around the kneecap and in that VMO. Brilliant, other side, push down and lift. If you have got a good leg and a bad leg, it's quite good to do the good leg on various levels. It teaches you what you're trying to achieve on the other leg, but it also sends messages up to the brain um, to tell it what a normal leg functions like. So it's good to do all of these exercises on both legs. Good stuff, really pushing down into the roller, lever the heel up, pull the toes up towards you. And it can't hurt to try and just keep a little bit going around the abdominals here. Brilliant. So I need two more sets of those. So if you can um, do two more sets of three times 10 second holds on each leg, then wonderful. Okay, we're going to do a shoulder bridge. So we know how important glutes are in the whole process of um, fixing knee problems, fixing back problems, all sorts of different things. Just rescue my equipment there. So rolling down onto your back. So it's going to be a shoulder bridge. Arms down by your sides, heels in towards your bottom, and tuck under, curl up all the way to the top. Make sure that's like a ski slope, and then curl back down again. We're going up with one, one vertebra at a time, tucking under, curling up. Good, but it should be your glutes working. If you struggle to get your glutes switched on, push down through your heels, stick your um, thumbs into your bum cheeks. Good. Another little tip is to send your knees away from you in that direction. So push away with your knees. Lifting up, that should use your glutes a little bit more. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, then put your feet onto the roller, tuck under, curl up a little bit more. So it should get this to function a little bit more. It is a little bit heavy on the hamstrings though as well. So I'll just do a couple more of those to demonstrate. Good. Last one. Amazing. So that's your glute max. We need some, some function in that to, in order to, to power, to push off through the leg. But the most important one as far as your knee pain is concerned is your glute med, your gluteus medius. It sits here and it stabilizes around the pelvis. So I want you to lie flat down onto your side. Um, I want you to tuck the ribs backwards, tuck the hips, hips backwards so you feel like you're slightly rotated forwards. Tuck your bottom under, ribs under, and then I want you to lift this knee. So your feet should be in line with your bum. Um, and you're just lifting this top knee. Just take note that I'm not lifting that knee enormously high. You can come up and prop yourself if you feel more comfortable. Um, but this is just functioning through here. So most importantly, you need to feel it in your glute med, which is there. I don't mind at first if you just feel it around the glutes in general, but I don't want you to feel it down through that leg. I definitely don't want you to feel it in the adductor or through here. Now, there are going to be a lot of you out there with weakness through this muscle. So um, I would expect that some of you are feeling it down through the leg. So if you are, push down, tuck that bottom hip backwards, tuck the bottom under, ribs under, tummy under, push that knee away from you and then lift. Just see if that makes any difference. If it doesn't, stop this exercise now, move on to the next one and concentrate on those shoulder bridges to get some function through your glutes. Good. Okay, so we want to do quite high numbers of these. Let's do 10 more. Eight, nine, ten, and then we're going to lift the feet up to hip height. So, in order to have this muscle functioning properly, I need you to be able to do 40 with your feet down and 40 with your feet up. So, that's the minimum. A few of you are going to really feel this muscle working and really feel it tiring, but I definitely don't want it to be pulling down through the thigh, and then that's just going to irritate the knee even more. Good. Let's just do 10 more. You'll be a bit better at counting these than I am as I'm talking away. All of these tips and tricks. Brilliant. Other side.
All right, so start off with this arm out straight. Um, so you can get your positioning right. Tuck the bottom hip under, ribs under, so stacking knees, and then just lifting that top knee. Tummy in, ribs under, come up if you want to. Good, and then just lifting this top knee. Good. You might feel like you need to constantly adjust on this one if you start feeling it down into the leg. It's okay to feel it on the underside glute med, by the way. Um, that's some, something people question me about quite a lot. So if you feel the, the underneath one working, that's great. That just means that you're pushing down through this leg, which is what you want to do. Not essential. Some people just feel it more than others. I feel it on some days and not other days. So keep going there. Last 10 of these. One of the most boring exercises because you've got to do so many of them. Bring your feet up to hip height and then lifting that top knee. So you can support yourself through this hand if you want, but fingertips down is important rather than pushing down with the whole arm, just the fingertips. Someone said once on a, um, a loaf of soft bread, you don't want to push your fingers down into it. Good. Okay, just 10 more of these. Brilliant. Okay, so let's come up into standing. I'm going to use this um, overball, which I find quite useful for a lot of different exercises. Um, but you can use your large Swiss ball, um, or um, failing that, you can just use a football uh, behind your back. Um, and failing that, you could probably just slide up and down quite a slidey wall. But as it stands here, this is my favourite thing because it's not too big, not too bulky. Um, you can get them, get them anywhere, Amazon easily so I want to bring your feet right out in front of you so you don't want to be on a slicky surface for your feet because you want to feel for just about as far as you can handle them being out in front of you toes pointing forwards um, make sure that when you squat that your knees are pointing forwards as well have the ball in the um, small of your lower back there and you're sending your hips straight down so the hips are going straight down coming back up squeeze your bum as you come back up Knee shouldn't be going over toes. That's why this is a nice, safe one to do with the knee pain. Obviously, it might irritate the knee, and that's something um, that we need to talk about. Uh, if any of these exercises do irritate through the knees, you need to stabilize and pull up. If you feel it whilst you're doing an exercise, you want to think about, does it get worse with each one? If it gets worse with each one, I think you need to stop. Uh, if it doesn't get worse with each one and it stays the same, does it get worse with each set that you do? If it does get worse with each set that you do, then stop. Um, and then how long does it stay painful for straight after? I think straight after 10 minutes is okay for it to stay painful for, as long as that pain goes completely. If that pain goes completely, it's perhaps that you just haven't strained these stretches before and you need to, to just push them but gently and sensibly. Um, if, um, if that pain stays with you for the rest of the day, then clearly not great. Uh, and if you certainly, if you wake up with pain the next day, even if you didn't have pain during or straight after, then we've irritated things. Um, and then you need to do things like um, icing it or um, an, uh, an ibuprofen gel wrap, which is putting the, the gel or the cream on the irritated area and wrapping it in cling film overnight. Wonderful thing. And then see if it hurts the next time. If it hurts just as bad the next time, then that's the time to contact me or your local physio or your local doctor. Okay, we're going to stop there. I don't know how, th how your thighs are feeling after that set of about 30, I think, as I was talking. We're going to do one more set of those, but we're going to bring one foot back at a time. So this back foot comes back and you're up on the toes. So we're essentially doing a single leg squat. This one works a little bit better with a big Swiss ball behind you. So we're just squatting essentially down on that single leg. Now, if this irritates, just do another set with the two legs. going to stick to 10 for now. Seven, eight, it's more significantly difficult than the two legs. Brilliant. And the other leg, notice I'm not going too low down. The knees don't need to function through such a closed range. Um, so we're just staying where you feel comfortable to just above 90 degrees. If you're a weightlifter or a sprinter or something like that, then much more advanced rehab needs to be done for that lower range but not for this video today.
Good, three more. Tighten up through the thigh each time. Two. Last one. Brilliant. So now the thighs and the knees and the tendons around the knees are, are nicely warmed up. I just want to do with you a split squat to finish. Now some of you may want to stop there if your knees are already feeling just a little bit tender. Um, those of you who are a bit further on then the split squat's wonderful. So make sure that your feet are um, far enough apart for you to come down for that back knee to aim down towards the floor. If you do have the wall next to you then wonderful. So good. We're just going to do 10 of these. Squeeze the bum on the way up. Pull up back through the back heel there. Five, keep the weight between the two legs. Good. Seven, three more. Tummy in, bottom under. Brilliant. At the side, just shimmy round. Good. Make sure the feet are wide enough. You're really high up on that back toe. Squat down and pull back up. You always want to feel like you're pulling back up through the calf on that side a little bit. Tummy in, bottom under. Three. Watch that front knee. Make sure it's going over the toes. Watch the back knee. Make sure it's not dropping in as well. Eight. Two more. Last one. Brilliant. We can do another couple of sets of those, but if this is your first time, then just stick with what I've done today. In the future, you can pause it and do um, a few more sets of each one. So lovely. There's my standard knee rehabilitation um, protocol. Um, obviously, like I said, I can't diagnose what's going on with your knees at home, um, but please, please feel free to, um, to write a little comment in the box and I'll see what I can answer, whether you're unsure whether this is appropriate for you or not. Give me, give me a little bit of background information in the comments box at the bottom. So scroll all the way down past all those other videos and there should be a little comment box, which you can either write nice things about, <laughs> about how you found this, um, give me a bit of feedback as to whether it's helped you with your knee problems and also um, if you've got any concerns um, please write a comment in there and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can with hopefully some useful information um, so there you go follow me on Facebook Twitter snapchat all the information's in that description box um, and good luck with those knee problems